Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to the name that is above every name. The name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, it is always a joy and an honor to um, have the privilege and the opportunity to um, share at these meetings. I do not take this for granted at all. And I want to honor the Lord and honor the servant of God, Reverend Dr. David Ogwele, and all the other leaders. Amen. Let's give God praise. Amen. All the other leaders that are being multiplied, multiplied in this commission for divine agenda. There are churches that are raising church members, but Dominion City is focused on multiplying ministers of the gospel. And uh, I pray that this, this move will flow into every church. And if you're a pastor here and uh, you lead a congregation, don't be content with making church members. Multiply ministers of the gospel. Multiply leaders. There is no reason why they cannot be like you. Jesus did not die for you two times on the cross. <laughs> Amen? They don't have an inferior Holy Spirit from the one that you have. Blessed be the name of Jesus Christ. It's a joy to be here and we praise the Lord for this opportunity. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we love you because you first loved us. And we thank you for who you are. We thank you because your presence is here already. And we thank you because there is something you are doing that you will continue now in a measure that we have not experienced up until now. Thank you. Holy Spirit of God, have your way here. Just glorify Jesus. In fact, we demand that Christ be glorified here tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Open our eyes to see your ways so that we can cooperate with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, blessed Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay, this evening, um, uh, I trust that we will have like two sessions, this evening and somewhere tomorrow. Um, and what the Lord has led me to do this evening is to provide a framework, a framework so that you can see where what tomorrow by the grace of God will be looking at, you know, the empowerment, the anointing that you need to function in the marketplace. But I want to talk about the Holy Spirit in general, so to speak, this evening. And you are going to discover from our sharing that the Holy Spirit is the how of the impossible. I said the Holy Spirit is what? He is the how of the impossible. You are also going to discover that the Holy Spirit is God's secret of everything. How would you like to know one secret for everything? The name of that secret provided by God to the believer is the Holy Spirit. And we will be diving into scripture and then hopefully if we have a few minutes left at the end we will be praying because of course we will also be praying in the rest of the meeting. And so the framework is that God has made an irreversible, irrevocable decision that the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as, as, how will the earth be filled? To what extent will the earth be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God? What's the extent? as, as the waters cover the sea. So you have to have an idea. Dr. David was talking about, you know, the waters on the sea. Just stand by the Atlantic Ocean and look. 
the deepest part of the ocean is in a place called the Mariana, Mariana Trench. The Mariana Trench is in the Western Pacific, off the coast, you know, between, somewhere between the U.S. and Japan, in the Pacific Ocean. And the depth of water at the Mariana Trench is more than 11 kilometers. From the surface of the water to the bottom, the ocean floor is more than 11 kilometers of water. 11, imagine 11 kilometers of water. The pressure at those depths is terrible. Human beings cannot survive there. 11 kilometers of water. And God Almighty says, the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And God did not say the church shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. What did he say? <laughs> he said the earth, not the church. You see, this church business should not confuse you. Jesus Christ is not just the Lord of the church. He is the Lord of the universe. He is Lord of Church Street. He is Lord of Main Street. He is Lord of Wall Street. He is Lord of all. Somebody give him praise in the house here tonight. Hallelujah to the Son of God. So that's the plan. God announced that in three times in Scripture. You can see it in Habakkuk chapter 2. He repeated it in Isaiah. And he said it in the book of Numbers. He said, as surely as I live, the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Remember that in the morning session, God's servant now began to sh share how this is going to happen. There is going to be a double outpouring, something coming from inside, those that are carrying rivers, and then the rain falling from above. It will be a combination of an outpouring out of the spirits of God's people that are located across the earth, located in the different sectors of society, out in the marketplace, plus rain. Just like what happened, you remember, with the flood of Noah. You remember that the Bible says in that scripture in Genesis chapter 7, that the fountains of the deep were broken up. And then the windows of heaven were opened. And then rain began to pour and rivers began to flow. And the earth could not contain it. The fountains were not exhausted. It was God that shot them. Are you following the matter now? So if those fountains had continued flowing, just picture those fountains flowing, rain falling from above and see the flood. So this means that God's people who are located everywhere will be carrying this river. They will be carrying this life. And they will carry it not just in church, but they will carry it to the different sectors where they are located. You see, this anointing that only works inside church is spurious. I said, anointing that works only inside church is questionable. Because look at the New Testament. They were healing the sick, and the Bible says they brought the sick out in the marketplace. The shadow of Peter passing by was, was you know, doing all of these things. The presence of God is not limited to a building. Hallelujah. Once this paradigms and these mindsets are corrected in you, then you can expect God to manifest his power as readily in your office, in your business, as he does in church. Because he's the same God and you are carrying him, carrying him inside. <laughs> I'll be talking about that hopefully tomorrow. Beginning from this evening as we continue our study. So the spirit of God in you will then empower you to live like Jesus lived. To represent him, to carry his life and bring his glory to the uttermost ends of the earth. Blessed be the name of Jesus Christ. But you see, as, I was, as we were worshiping, the Lord said to me, he said, I am God. 
I am God. I have all power. But my people do not understand my ways. My people do not understand the way of the wind. The Lord said, my people don't understand the way of the wind. The way of my spirit. Can two walk together except they be agreed? So the problem is not whether God has power or not. The challenge is that the people that God is going to use to actualize his purpose, they don't understand the workings, the protocols of glory. Hallelujah. And I pray that as we look at these scriptures and matters today, things will get clearer to you. So we are going to be reading several scriptures, and I will not teach on all of them, but I want to highlight on, on several, and then we will focus on the secret of everything. Come with me to Luke chapter 1. It's a scripture that we have already encountered. The angel came to Mary and made an announcement. Huh? And that announcement was something impossible. What did the angel say? He said, you are a virgin, but you are going to conceive and you are going to bring forth a child. Are you following that? And he says in verse 31, behold, you will conceive in your womb. You will bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the highest. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary asked the how question. You see, much of our preaching and teaching has a major deficit in the church. There is something missing. And what is missing is how. So you are going to hear a preacher say, you are a millionaire. It's your turn to shine. Somebody say, it's my turn to shine. It's my turn to shine. You are a millionaire. Somebody talk to your neighbor. Talk to your, you know, the COVID thing has reduced, uh, you know, talk to your neighbor. <laughs> Or shake your neighbor or something. You understand? When they are saying all of those things, they are saying, when they finish talking, I say, how? How? You are promising people products without process. That's what you are doing. And there is no product that does not have a process. Everything you see around there is a product. There are processes to every product. And if you make all the noise and you don't engage the process, you will never arrive at the product. But if you stay with the product process without talking about the product, you will still arrive at the product. Whether it has to do with financial prosperity or, or success in ministry or fruitfulness or a virgin giving birth, the big question is what? How? And Mary asked that how question. Look what Mary said. Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I do not know a man? Then the angel gave an answer. And this answer is God's answer to the how for every impossibility. Do you know that even the Christian life itself is impossible? <laughs> you are making an assumption that it is normal to live a holy life. That's a joke. It is normal to live in sin. It's normal to live in sin. That is the natural state of every human being. So anytime you see righteousness, somebody living day to day to the glory of God, no iniquity, no covetousness, no immorality, no pornography, no filthiness, no curse words coming out of your mouth, you know that something is going on. This is not a regular human being. <laughs> No, this is not a regular human <laughs> being. Are, are, are you following the matter here? So, Mary says, how? And then look what the angel says in verse, in verse 35. The angel answered and said to her, you know, Mary said, since I do not know a man, I can imagine the angel say, man? <laughs> Did he say man? Man? Man can't do what I'm talking about. You see, several of us, when God begins to talk to you, your eyes go to men. How will this thing happen? I don't know any man. 
how will this level of increase and elevation and open doors pa, pa, how will this thing come to pass i don't know anybody i don't know i don't have this i don't know this i don't the angel said man we are not talking about man here put you and your human beings aside we have a heavenly how we have the answer from heaven to the impossibilities that we announce when we promise impossibilities, we make a budgetary allocation of power to accomplish what we said. How? See, the things, that's why we are talking about God inundating, God flooding the nations with his glory. And you are wondering how? We are talking about God bringing transformation to a nation like our country. And the question then is how? Because if you can see the problem, man, our people say you don't tell a deaf man that war has started. <laughs> you, you, all you need to do is look. If you don't have ears, you have eyes. <laughs> you can see that this country is sick, nigh unto death. But we serve a God that raises the dead and calls the things that be not as though they were. How? The angel said to Mary, the Holy Spirit. That's the how. That's the answer to the how. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. There is somebody called Holy Spirit. Mary. Mary. There is somebody called Holy Spirit. And that person called Holy Spirit is not something. Is somebody. Is going to come upon you. And as that Holy Spirit comes, he will not be coming empty-handed. The power of the highest, the person that... You see, height has potential energy. Do you know that if this bottle of water is one kilometer high, it can break your head? <laughs> it looks small, but when you add height to it, as it's coming, 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 it's gathering power. The Bible says, he that cometh from above is above all. This is the power of the highest. So he is higher than the impossibility that we are talking about. He is higher than the confusion. He is higher than the barrenness. He is higher than these issues. He is not at the same level. You see, you only struggle with things at your level. How many of you are struggling with how to buy a private jet. <laughs> At your level, you may be struggling with how to pay rent. <laughs> but there are some people at their own level. <laughs> they have another agenda that they are dealing with. Heights are different. The power of the most high the power, the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit will overshadow. You see, overshadow means to over and shadow. <laughs> it's over and then it's shadow. That is the, you know, you don't understand why Peter's shadow was healing the sick. You don't understand why. Let me explain it to you. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide where? Under the shadow of the Almighty. What had happened is the fusion that the man of God was talking about earlier in the day. The shadow of the Almighty had overshadowed Peter and overshadowed his shadow. So as Peter is passing by, it's not only Peter. Peter is carrying the Almighty and when the shadow passes over you, that is the shadow of the Almighty and there could be no impossibilities under that shadow. The sick, the crippled, they were arising from their, from their place. I turn here to Tetsa, Lekai, and those things will manifest again, says the Spirit. For I have not changed and I will never change. The how. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. How is that campus going to be turned around with revival fire? The Holy Spirit will come upon you. Take away your eyes from man.
God says, my people don't understand the way of the wind. I don't want to set, and he said, because this thing will not be, it will not be your effort. It will not be your ability. Therefore, the holy thing that will be born will be called the son of God. And your cousin Elizabeth, <laughs> this is information for you, Mary. Your cousin Elizabeth, she too, she has conceived. And this is now the sixth month with her who was called barren. There was a power that converted her barrenness to past tense. Did you hear what I said? I said there was a power that converted Elizabeth's barrenness to past tense. This is the sixth month with her who was called barren. Never again. Never again will you look at Eliza and say, Eliza is barren. You will never say that again. But how did that happen? There was a power that came on her. You don't know the conception of John the Baptist was also the Holy Spirit, but not in the sense of Christ. It was God's power at work to make a barren woman to conceive, but not in the sense of the incarnation when Jesus Christ, you know, took flesh in the womb of Mary, Emmanuel, God with us. Tomorrow I hope to spend some more time on that because John the Baptist, remember the Bible says he will be filled with the Holy Spirit from his mother's womb. Let's leave that here tomorrow. But the Holy Spirit is the how of the impossible. How do you bring order out of chaos? Go to Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. How? In the beginning... God created the heavens and the earth. Verse 2. And watch the confusion. The earth was without form and void. Darkness was on the face of the deep. Do you see the confusion there? The earth was without form. It was void. Darkness was over the face of the deep. This was confusion. How do you bring order out of this chaos? Look, look, look at the next part there. It says, and the Spirit of God was doing what? Was hovering. Hovering. One Bible version says fluttering. Fluttering. The KJV said the Spirit of God moved. Moved upon the face of the water. He was incubating. This is creative incubation. The Spirit of God. Before God said, let there be. The spirit was already working. You see, the problem is that many of us, we are speaking words before the spirit has incubated. When you send the word without the spirit operational, you have dead letters and they can kill. But the spirit was moving, hovering over the face of the water. And then God said, let there be light. And there was light. Something interests me, and I want you to listen to this. Do you know that since Genesis chapter 1, I have not seen again where the Holy Spirit was moving and hovering over other things. Because at this point, there was no human being. There was no man. Does this make sense? So the Spirit of God was moving over the you know, inanimate creation over the mess, the chaos that was planet Earth. But since the arrival of human beings upon the planet Earth, the spirit now moves through people. Did you hear what I said? When we are praying, Holy Spirit, move! Holy Spirit, move! Holy Spirit is saying, where are my vessels? Where are my carriers? Where are the men and the women through whom I will flow to execute my will upon the earth. How do you convert a desert to fruitfulness? The how is the river. Come with me to um, Isaiah chapter 32. Oh, Isaiah chapter 32. It's amazing. Blessed be God forevermore. Have you seen Isaiah 32? From verse, um, uh, from verse 9. Just put it from verse 9. Let's read it quickly. The, maybe put up the um, NLT 
or something that will make it simpler if you are. Thank you. Listen, you women who lie around in ease. Listen to me, you who are so smug. Yeah? In a short time, just a little more than a year, you careless ones will suddenly begin to care. <laughs> you careless ones, you will suddenly begin to care. For your fruit crops will fail. So there is a failure, crop failure. The harvest you are expecting will never take place. Next verse. Listen. He said, tremble you women at ease. Throw off your complacency. Strip your pretty clothes off and put on burlap, sackcloth to show your grief. Yes? Beat your breast in sorrow for your bountiful farms and your fruitful grapevines for your land will be overgrown with farms and briars. Your joyful homes and happy towns will be gone. God is telling them what is coming. He said, look, there will be disaster. Thorns and briars are going to multiply. Joy will disappear. The message version said, happy will no longer be happy. Your happy homes will be gone. The palace and the city will be deserted. And the busy towns will be empty. Wild donkeys will frolic and flocks will graze in the empty forts and watch towers. All of these things are going to continue. Next verse. Next verse, brother. Tell. The royal palace is deserted. Bustling city quiet as a morgue. The empty parks and playgrounds taken over by wild animals. Delighted with their new home. In other words, human beings will be gone. Wild animals. Imagine wild animals roaming around lucky. <laughs> That's bad news because it shows it's the person. Where are the people? All of this will continue. Go back to NLT so that they can see the thing in verse 15. These thorns and briars, this hopelessness will continue until what happens, everybody? Until at last the spirit is poured out on us from heaven. Then what is going to happen? Then, then, what's going to happen now? The wilderness will become a fruitful field. And the fruitful field will yield bountiful crops. Next verse. Justice will rule in the wilderness. Righteousness in the fertile field. Oh, bros, keep going. Justice will rule. Righteousness will bring peace. Righteousness, I want to read it for you here. He said, until the spirit is poured upon us from on high, then the wilderness will become a fruitful field. The fruitful field will become counted as a forest. Then justice will dwell in the wilderness. Righteousness will remain in the fruitful field. The work of righteousness will be peace. The effect of righteousness will be quietness and assurance forever. My people will dwell in peaceful habitations, in secure dwellings, in quiet resting places. What is all of this? Where are all of these things coming from? Until the Spirit is poured upon us from on high. So the status quo of thorns and briars, hopelessness, desertion, palaces deserted, things collapsing, that status quo is going to continue until something happens. Until the Spirit is poured upon us from on high. I want you to look at verse 20. I love verse 20. He said, blessed are you who sow. You see, you can plant now. And you are not sowing in dry ground anymore. He said, you are sowing where? Beside all waters. The field. You know, when you are farming on hard ground, that it is what it's like to labor without the help of the Holy Spirit. Come with me to a scripture that is repeated and anytime God repeats something, it's because it's important to him. Come with me to um, jo Joshua chapter 15. You're also going to see the same scripture in Judges chapter 1, but let's read it in Joshua. It's the story of how um, uh, Caleb drove out. Joshua chapter 15, uh, please put it from verse 14. Ah! The how of fruitfulness is the outpouring of the Spirit of God. I want to quickly get through this introductory part because there's, we want to look at the pattern, the master plan that God designed. Now, Joshua chapter 15, yes, from verse 14. Uh, Caleb 
drove out the sons of Anak from there. Sheshai, Ahiman, Talmai, children of Anak. Um, then verse 15. Then he went up from there to the inhabitants of Debir and all that. Now verse 16. And Caleb said, He who attacks Kiriath Sefer and takes it, to him I will give Aksa, my daughter, the wife. Hi, I like this father. <laughs> I like this man. He said, before you come near my daughter, you need to go and face some giants. How do I know you can look after her? I don't want my daughter hanging around a wimp. <laughs> if, you, if you are interested in marrying my daughter, go look at Kiriat Sefer. Go and collect it. Then I will give you my, my daughter. You see, this is a different father from King Saul. You remember King Saul, who was trying to use his daughter for vengeance against David. You remember the story now? He said, what is your bride price? And Saul said, eh, I don't want any bride price, though, except 200 or 100 foreskins of the Philistines. 100 foreskins? Do you understand what the man is asking for? It means you have to catch the Philistine and cut his private part and bring before you can marry. And the plan was that those, those Philistines will kill David if he dares to try it. David said, ah, is, that, is that the bride price he wants? He said, yes. He said, wait, I'm coming. <laughs> David went and slaughtered 200. He paid double. Killed 200 Philistines. Brought the four skins and they counted. Saul was watching as they were counting the thing. What a father. What a father. What a father. But there's another kind of father. A father that has the future of the children in mind. He said, if you want my daughter, face the giants. Collect the city. Then you can collect my daughter. Because he himself is a giant killer. You didn't see where he says, Caleb, he drove out the sons of the Anakims. So he's not telling you to do something he's not doing. So let me be sure that you are of the same kind as me before I marry my daughter into your house. Some people, your primary consideration is whether your daughter is marrying to the same tribe, another tribe. What does tribe got to do with it? We are talking about giant killers. <laughs> we are talking about men and women of vision. Put up the next verse. I think it's verse 17 now. Aha. Uh -huh. So, Othniel, the son of Kinas, the brother of Caleb, took it. Somebody will qualify. <laughs> Listen, set the standard high. Somebody will qualify. Othniel, the, the son of Kinas, the younger brother of Caleb, he took the place and he gave him Aksa, his daughter, as wife. Now, I want you to follow this. Watch. Next verse. And servants of God, listen closely because I believe that this is what God will have us do. To pray the prayer of Aksa. This is a critical prayer for the church in the end times. Now it came, it was so when she came to him that she persuaded him to ask her father for a field. So she came to Othniel and said, ask papa to give you a field. And Caleb responded and gave them a field in the south, in the Negev. The Negev is the southern part of Israel and it's desert, it's dry. As you are going down towards, because from that place is not far from the Sinai, the Sinai mountains. The place is arid desert. I want you to see it. Keep that in mind. So, when she dismounted from, the, uh, from her donkey, Caleb said to her, say, what do you want? Now, watch what Aksa said. Aksa said, give me a blessing. Since you have given me land in the south, give me also springs of water. Put it up in a simpler version. I want you to see that south so that you can, you can see the matter at stake here. She answered, give me another gift. You already given me land in the Negev. You see, there are gift, two gifts here being, this, being dealt with. You have the land that has already been given. And that land is in the Negev. Put it in the message version. I want you to see that matter, yes. He said, give me a marriage gift. You have given me desert land. 
Do you see, do you see that now? That's the Negev, the south. Land in the wilderness, in the desert. That's, can you imagine that you got land in the wilderness as your wedding gift? Don't forget that these were agrarian communities. In other words, they lived on farming. You have to farm the land. They were either farming or they were rearing cattle. Now, this is the land that they have received in the desert. The southern part, dry, arid. What are you going to plant that will grow in the place? But Aksa said, I am not complaining about the land that you gave me. Give me the answer to that land. Give me the solution. Give me the matter that when it is present, it will cancel desert. Some of you are complaining that, you know, the area where you are is too hard. The thing is too difficult. The place, this area is a tough place. To plant a church here is very hard. To do business in this area is very hard. I want you to listen. No matter how hard the land is, no matter how tough the desert is, there is an answer. There is something that if it is present, the desert will become a fruitful field. Aksa said, give me springs of water. I'm not complaining about my assignment. I'm not complaining about my inheritance. I'm not complaining about what you have given to me. But give me the antidote. Give me the thing that will cancel the disadvantages. And look what the father did. Look, look, hey, 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 ha. Put it back in the King James or New King James. I want you to see something there. Hi, oh, tell, father, in the name of Jesus. Look, look what the father did. And he gave her, what did he give to her? Everybody, the upper and the lower springs. The upper and the lower springs. The upper and the lower springs. But, so think of what is going on. So you have on this desert land, suddenly springs opened from above and began to water the desert land. And then the lower springs burst out and began to water the same desert land. Fruitfulness multiplied. I want you to listen, church. God has given us in this end time a tough generation. God has given us, look, I believe that the world today is a much, much more difficult situation than the world that Peter and co faced. He said, my friend, now why do you say that? The Bible says, in the last days, iniquity will abound, will multiply. It was present when they were ministering, but now it has multiplied. Running towards two billion people upon the earth that will cut your throat if you tell them that Jesus is the Son of God. How will you reach them? Hard is the word. I lived in northern Nigeria for many years. Now you are dealing with a secularized world that has thrown the Bible out of the door. They say man can now marry a man and a woman can marry a woman. Now they are talking of what they call polyamory. One man marrying five women or two women marrying four men. Polyamory, plural now. Because you know, once you start, you can't stop. It's a downward slide. And people are marrying animals. You are, all kinds of terrible things are going on. And we are supposed to reach them with the gospel. How? Europe is the continent now with the least percentage of born again Christians. Europe is in a state, they say it's post-Christian. And we are supposed to reach them with the gospel. The question is how? God has given us a tough assignment. God has given us a difficult portion of the end time harvest to collect. You are looking at China. You are looking at India. I was in India some years ago. You need to see gods. Those of us who, are, who they say we are worshipping idols in Africa, you've not seen idols. There is one idol in India called Kali. Kali. Kali has six hands. With one hand, she's collecting something. Something. My other hand is doing something. My other hand is doing something. She has blood on her mouth, tearing flesh. And people are worshipping Kali. I saw the temple of the monkey god. Monkey. Monkey is a god in India. They are worshipping it. You dare not kill the monkey in those places. Now we are supposed to reach all of them with the gospel. How? 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 You have given us land in the desert. Now, eternal father, give to your church the upper 
and the lower springs. The upper and the lower springs. The upper and the lower springs. The upper and the lower springs. You see, when the upper springs begin to pour and the lower springs burst out, the wilderness will become a fruitful field. I said the wilderness will become a fruitful field. The desert will blossom. People that looked as if they will never get saved, light will shine upon them. This is the answer. So don't complain about where you are located. Ask for the upper and the lower springs. You see, the father, Aksa didn't know. Or maybe she knew because her prayer shows that she knew. In fact, Aksa knew. Aksa knew that the same papa that gave me land on this side also has upper and lower springs. So I don't need to complain. The people of the wind have nothing to complain about. <laughs> oh, pay, pay, my time is running. Come with me to Ezekiel. We must look at Ezekiel. We must look at Ezekiel. The secret of everything. I want you to look now. The Holy Spirit is not an alternative. There is no, the Holy Spirit is not an accessory. He said, well, you know, we, we need the Spirit, yeah, but let's be doing something. You, he said, he said, he said, the, the body without the spirit is what is dead. It is the spirit that quickens. The flesh profits nothing. Come to Ezekiel chapter 1. Hoy! Ah! I want you to watch Ezekiel now. So you know the story. Come down and follow me. Just listen. I want to make it simpler. Because I don't have all the time now to explain. So in Ezekiel chapter 1, Ezekiel saw visions of God. You see that in verse 1. Is that not so? It came to pass in the 30th year, in the fourth month, on the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captives by the river Keba, that the heavens were opened, and I saw visions of God. You can sit with people and see what they don't see. So I sat among the captives, but I saw something that they didn't see. <laughs> and he changes everything. I saw visions of God. Then Ezekiel began to describe, you know, brothers and sisters, this is one of my most favorite passages in the entire Bible. Because Ezekiel chapter 1 tells us what God is like. Do you know that God is described in the Bible? God is described in detail in the Bible. I mean, his person. Ah, hey. Sometimes I'm reading Ezekiel chapter 1, I start shouting, I start jumping, I start screaming. God is described in scripture. So, follow the matter now. So, Ezekiel saw, and verse 4, I looked and behold, a whirlwind was coming out of the north, a great cloud, raging fire, engulfing itself, brightness. I, I don't have time to read all that. Now, watch verse 5. There are some things I want you to notice in this scripture. There are some things. Number one is living creatures. You can write those things down because if you, if you, once you note them, then you understand what I'm sharing. Just write down somewhere, living creatures. The next thing I need you to write down is the spirit. So you have living creatures, then you have the spirit, then the third one is the wheels. The wheels. And then the fourth one is Ezekiel. Just note those four things as we are reading all these things. So, you now have these living creatures that came out from the midst of this whirlwind of fire. And then he began to describe them. This was their appearance. Huh? They had the likeness of a man. Each one had four faces. Each one had four wings. Their legs were straight. The soles of their feet were like the soles of calf's feet, sparkle like the color of burnished bronze. The hands of a man were under their wings. Their wings touched. The creatures, now look at verse 9. The creatures did not turn when they went, but each one went straight forward. As for the likeness of their faces, he began to describe their faces. He said they had the face of a man, eh? and then each four had the face of a um, a lion on the right side, the face of an ox on the left side, 
and the face of an ego on the other side. You can't call it back. <laughs> I want you to listen. He's not saying that there were four of them and each of them, this one had face of a lion, this one had face of an ox, this one had face of a cow. No. He's saying that each one had four faces. So picture a creature that looked like a man. And this living creature is standing like this. In front like this, you have the face of a human being. On this side, on the same head, you have the face of a lion. On this side, you have the face of a cow. And then on this side, you have the face of an eagle. Does such a creature have a back? <laughs> you see, the reason you have, a, you have a back is because you don't have eyes on that side. But these living creatures, they have the face of a human being, face of, an, of a lion, face of a cow, then the face of an eagle. So they don't have a back. That's why you read in scripture that God is sitting on his throne and there are 24 elders round about him and he's not backing any of them. So you are hearing seven eyes. Do you, you notice seven eyes? You see, somebody who has seven eyes does not have a blind spot. He does not have a blind spot. You cannot surprise him. Imagine that you had seven eyes. One looking like this, one looking like that, one looking like that, one looking the other way, and one looking inside the ground, and one looking up. From where will the matter come from? These are living creatures. Imagine you met one of them as you are going home this night. <laughs> What's going to happen? <laughs> you should fear God. You should fear God. He is not your classmate. If you cannot stand before living creature, what makes you think that you can stand before the creator? Sir? The storm humbled you. You couldn't face the storm. What about the person who created the storm? If a lion is coming towards you, will you stand in the place there? What about the person who made it? Do you know you cannot stand in front of the sun? The sun is 93 million miles away. You can't stand in front of it. You can't look at it. God is hotter than the sun. These are the living creatures. So we are now told that these living creatures, follow me quickly. I want you, don't miss this because, oh glory, God, this scripture has changed my life. I want you to watch something here. So these living creatures, verse 12, each of them went straight forward and look now at that verse 12. You will see the second character, the spirit. Where did the living creatures go, everybody? They went wherever the spirit wanted to go. And when they went, they did not turn. So who was it that set direction? It was the spirit that set the direction. And then these living creatures, once they are going in the direction of the spirit, they don't turn. They don't have any second consideration. Because the only direction to go is the direction where the spirit is going. Where do you want to go if not where the spirit is going? going is a road of death. It is the path, the highway of the spirit that is the way of life. They went where the spirit was going, they did not turn. Now watch the next character. The Bible now describes the fire and other things. I don't have time to get into all that. Now look at verse 15. Now as I looked at the living creatures, he said, behold, there was a wheel 
on the earth beside each living creature with four faces. So you have a wheel. A wheel. But this is not an ordinary wheel. Because in the next verse, he now began to describe the wheel. He said it was like the walk of a wheel in the middle of a wheel. So just imagine you have a wheel like this, and then you have a wheel like this inside. Ah, thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Now, do you notice, do you notice the wheel that is like a circle? Do you see that part? Then do you see the one that is inside it? Huh? Now watch. What that thing means is that that thing can go in four directions. And you see what I'm describing to you is God's transport system. This is why the Bible talks about God who dwells between the cherubims. Watch. So it means that this wheel can go like this. Is that not so? Then it can also go like this. But then it can also go like this. And it can go like this. So there is a direction for each face. So when it is time to go like this, the face of a man, what happens? Then the wheel starts going like that. When it's time to go like this, the face of the eagle, then the wheel starts going like that. When it's time to go like this, the face of the lion, then the wheel starts going like that. And or, or to go this way, the face of the ox. Those are the four directions. And I don't have time. Those four directions summarize what God is doing upon the earth. Those four faces. Now watch this. So you have the wheel. Now these wheels are not dead. They have eyes. The Bible said the wheels themselves are full of eyes. So this is not your bicycle wheel. <laughs> these wheels have eyes everywhere. The living creatures have eyes even under their wings. Now, everybody watch now. Watch, watch the matter. Look at verse 19. I want you to now pay attention. See, we have met three of the characters, right? He remains one. That person's name is Ezekiel. Watch the characters. Watch what I'm telling you. This, week, this is not a normal weekend. It shall come to pass that following this Holy Ghost conference, strange manifestations will begin to take place. There shall be an outbreak, an outburst of the signs and wonders of the manifestations of the Spirit upon the nations of the earth. Through the hands of my servants, my maid servants, the least of my people, my spirit will walk and I will accomplish mighty things, says the Spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. Now watch. When the living creatures went, what happened to everybody? The wheels went by them. When the living creatures we are lifted up from the earth, what happened to everybody? The wheels we are lifted up. Verse 20. Wherever the spirit wanted to go, what did the Bible say happened now? That's where they went. Why? Because that's where the spirit is going. Why do you go where the spirit is going? Because that is where the spirit is going. Where else do you want to go? You didn't hear the Bible say, as many as are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. So where are you supposed to go as a child of God? You go where the Spirit is going. Wherever the Spirit wanted to go, that's where they went. And now everybody listen. Listen to the master plan. Listen to the secret of everything. Why we are the wheels doing what the living creature was doing? He said because the spirit of the living creature was inside the wheels. Verse 21. When those living creatures went, what happened? These, the wheels, went. When those stood, what happened to these ones? These stood. And when these we are lifted up, what happened to those? They we are also lifted up together, Taika, together with them. Why? He said, because the spirit of the living creature was where? 
was inside the wheels. Now, final verse. My time is out. Come to chapter 2, verse 1. And then he spoke to me, son of man. Everybody, look at now verse 2. Then the spirit entered me. That spirit that was inside the living creature, that was inside the wheels, entered me. And when the spirit entered me, what did the spirit do to me? The spirit set me on my feet. Watch. Go to chapter 3. Go to chapter 3, verse 12. Chapter 3, verse 12. Then the spirit did what? Everybody, what did the spirit do to Ezekiel? The spirit lifted me up. Could Ezekiel lift himself up? Impossible. But now, the same spirit that was inside the living creature, that was inside the wheels, has entered inside Ezekiel. And that spirit is now making Ezekiel to do what the living creatures were doing, what the wheels were doing, and what the spirit was doing. I want you to watch this. This is the master plan of, of redemption. The plan is, how can we get human beings to live like us? To go where we are going. To stand where we stand. To do what we do. To cast out what we cast out. To heal what we heal. To set free what we set free. How can we get human beings to live our kind of life? The wisdom of God said, take the same spirit that is inside Jesus Christ and put it inside them. When the spirit that is inside the sun enters into them, where the sun stood, they will stand. Where he said, come out, they will say, come out. Where he said, rise, they will say, rise. Where he was able to live righteous, they will live righteous. Why? Because the spirit of the living creature is not inside the wheel. The same spirit that is inside Jesus Christ has entered inside you. The same spirit that is in the Son of God has entered inside you. I said, the same spirit. Come and hear Romans chapter 8 verse 11. Romans chapter 8 verse 11. He said, Romans 8 11. He said, but if the same spirit of him who raised up Jesus from the dead is inside you. Then that same spirit will do in you what he did in Christ. He will do inside you what he did in Jesus. In the same way that he quickened him, he will quicken you. In the same way he anointed him, he will anoint you. In the same way he empowered him, he will empower you. The same spirit. Somebody rise up on your feet and begin to pray. The same spirit. The spirit of the living creature is inside the wheels. The spirit of the living Jesus has entered inside. Pray, carry, proceed. The same spirit. The same spirit. The spirit of the living creature is inside the wheels. The same spirit that made Jesus to do all that he did. That same spirit has entered inside. That spirit has entered inside. Toriesa, Toriesa, Toriesa. the master plan that's the master plan the same spirit hey what Stretch the channels 
and let the river flow. Moramo, moramo, moramo. She said, Tamba River, Bata. The same spirit. Oh, glory to Jesus. Father, thank you for the master plan. Father, thank you for the master plan. Thank you for the master plan. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to watch this as we pray to close. Notice Ezekiel could not lift himself up. The wheels didn't have power to lift themselves up. The living creatures could do that because they are alive. But now, the same spirit that was inside the living creature is inside the wheel. And then the shocking part was that that same spirit now entered into a human being. And when the spirit entered into the human being, the human being began to do impossible things. Why? Because the spirit of the living creature was now inside Ezekiel. This is the master plan. I can imagine God in heaven said, how can we get these people to live like us? How can we get them to minister like us? Look at Peter and go. How did fisherman of Galilee begin to minister like Jesus Christ, the son of God? The same spirit that was in his master had entered inside. So what's the master plan? The master plan now is allow the spirit to operate. Allow the spirit. Take away the obstacles. Take away the obstacles. Allow the spirit to flow freely. There are two quick prayers and I'll take my seat. I want you to ask God, dredge the channels of my spirit and let the river of your spirit flow. Dredge the channel. Take away every clutter. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. I surrender myself. Oh, Holy Spirit. Have your way inside my heart. Have your way here. Flow freely. Flow freely. Flow freely. Flow freely. Flow freely. Flow freely.